Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is an update on my Elf Town work, such as it is. And uh, since it's at the computer, um, I thought I would shoot it in the style of the rapid fire critiques. And I'll, I shot some, I'll tell you more at the end. Um, and it just seemed like that, that system feels better. And since I've already got the gear set up, it was like, okay, so let's do it this way. Um, so what I'm gonna show you today is gonna be the, um, a new design for a building and how I am now planning on having the pieces cut and some of the organization I've done to hopefully make the second building or the third building or the fourth building much, much faster, much, much faster. That's the goal. So um, let's jump in and I'll show you what I've done. So this is the um, second building. And what I tried to do with this building was uh, try to make it a little smaller than the first building it's not a lot smaller um, and also to um, try to use the parts from the first building to build a second building so I could build it faster I was thinking okay now I got one building let me take all those parts and build a second one and that did not work out quickly at all the main reason is that the uh, the the parts needed to be resized to match the materials so I finally went in and did some um, picking out of what, what do I have available to cut. I want several thicknesses. I want, you know, 1 seconds, 1 64th if I can, 1, you know, 3 64ths, right? So I, I want all these different, so I found a, uh, all these materials. Then I went in and did um, the actual scaling for, um, you know, what, how big should a hand post, uh, rail post be? These are actually still a hair large, but they're they're much, much closer to true scale if you got, you know, a guy standing next to him. Um, so doing that me meant I had to shift um, the whole railing design somewhat. So I had to rebuild the circles that I had made before. Um, and then when I wanted to add this uh, overhang, which I thought would be nice and interesting. It meant I had to create a new brace for it. And then when I was calculating the width of those braces, right, da da da, then I changed the width of this and I had to figure it all out. So basically, I almost built the complete building like it was a new building. And uh, yeah, that took a long time. So my big goal was to make sure that this building is built with the next building in mind very explicitly and the building after that and the building after that. So here's um, an area where I wanted to scale it. Like everything else, I am trying to go to scale. So I um, went online, figured out when you build stairs, how high should the risers be? How wide should the tread be? This is, you know, of course, a side view and how, how big of an overhang it should be. So then I had to reassemble, you know, assemble those stairs, create new ones. I wanted a landing so that when models are ascending the stairs, they have a, a sort of stopping point halfway up. So um, getting that all together, then I had to, wait a minute, what am I doing? Then I had to create a side for the stairs, right? You don't want all that, that that's gonna be layers of material in it. So we need something to dress the side of it. And then I had to come up with an icon for that that would look good and match everything else. That's the second version of it. So. So um, needless to say, putting this together was um, a lot of new work and um, looking at my notes. And I had to consider also start thinking about, well, how is this all going to get constructed? Um, so the foundation, right? How am I going to deal with, um, and it's actually not shown here, um, how am I going to assemble this box? Uh, is this four sides? Is this, um, you know, going to be, uh, 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 the the top plate is recessed or is it going to sit flush um, and then things like um, the um, niche assemblies so how how does this work I mean how am I going to create a recessed area uh, so what I ended up doing you can see it behind here is this piece is actually larger than that so I can cut a hole in the wall and then have this piece have the actual icon on it and then glue that into the back so you have a recess the thickness of the wall. So I had to think about that and also how that would work for um, do windows and doors and uh, and a similar you know setup like that. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second, but all of this 
was a, a bit of work to try to figure out. And then um, I decided I'd go all in and I figured once, once I'm here, might as well finish the building. If these are gonna be parts of the next building, let's finish them exactly as they're gonna be every piece and how it's gonna be cut. So I did the trim on the gables. I um, did, um, um, I don't know what you call this, footing, floors, something for the gable. Um, so this is uh, two layers, right? I'm like, okay, well the floors need to be uh, multi-layered and from the front you can see this, right? The second story window, let's add layers, it adds interest. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, well, and then um, one of the big deals was coming up with a pattern for the stones for the floor. Now, a lot of this is gonna be covered and um, I need to talk to um, uh, the person who's doing the cutting for me to see whether it's really onerous to have all of this extra stuff in the middle, it may be, um, and I could overlay the um, footprint of the building and then you know excise out, which I probably should do anyway. I hate waste of any kind, um, but then I can clear that out. But anyway, this is the tiling. I found some patterns online. Go look, stone patios, how do you lay out pavers? Lots of patterns. So I created a, a, a template of that pattern and then I can just tile it and it I think it looks great. I think that's gonna look really nice, um, especially because I, for this instance, I thought, I'm not sure I wanna carve the stones into the surface. I think they can look polished um, and I think that it will be um, easier to do, especially because I won't be able to cover them if I have something engraved into the surface. So this is the uh, entryway icon that I came up with. Tanya was very helpful in, uh, I had another thing going on and she was like, I don't know about that. And I said, all right. And she said, well, try, what about something like this? She was pointing to something else I had done. I was like, that's not a bad idea. So built this, created this. Um, this can be engraved onto the floor and I think that's gonna look really nice. And that way, that's why I have the tiling engraved as well. Um, then I went on to an online elf language generator, it does hobbits and I think dwarves too, and um, typed in something. And uh, this is the text of that. I will uh, not say what it is and let you uh, see if you, if you know Elvish, if you're really in that deep, you tell me what that says. Uh, nothing dirty, of course. It's actually, I, th I thought, relevant to this entire like, theme. So, um, that is what got me here. Oh, we don't need this now. <sighs> See, I told you, told you I shot rapid fires. All right. So, what did I do um, from this? How did I uh, go forward? So, what I did is I took the building, as you see it, and I literally deconstructed it. I took off every piece, every layer, every shape, everything, and laid them out. Uh, so that way I know I have all the pieces. So this way I guarantee, unless I made a mistake, that I have all the right numbers of braces and the right uh, facings for them and, and all of that. So um, this is the material list that I'm using to cut layers out of. So from 1 32nd uh, to 1 16th, right, all the way up to 1 8th for um, the layer of the floor and for the dormers, I believe these are. I have to go back and check. I think that ver variety is gonna look nice and it's gonna stack, um, I think, well. And so here um, are, um, oh wait, we're gonna go take a look at it in a second. So. I did um, this layout and then I did uh, this is a, the extra section of the layout um, for the bracings and walls. This is out of 1 16th as well. And I separated it into two files because um, Inkscape doesn't like it when you have a gazillion nodes and uh, I have um, quite a few uh, nodes. so. Um, it makes me uh, better and the Inkscape is happier if I don't put all of that on one sheet. And I wish I could make Inkscape use more of my computer because my computer could offer it a lot. My computer is ready to give and Inkscape is not uh, friendly to accept all of the extra power. 
I have available. So, so anyway, that's the um, conceit that I did here is to um, separate it. And how does that tie in to building the next buildings? Well, here are now the parts. All of these parts are assembled. Um, there are individual components and then the sub-assembly. So for instance, over here, right, I have the walls. It doesn't really need a piece, but I like to have it there. Um, I don't know if it actually fits these. So then I can put in notes, right? What does this meet as is? Um, and uh, then um, how does the floor look? So what I'm doing is I'm laying it out as top, uh, side, side, front, okay, that kind of idea. And so now when I'm doing my uh, uh, my designs, I can go, oh, okay, this is a side shot, go and grab this. This is a side shot, go and grab this. You know, this is a top view, okay, grab that. Whatever, actually that's a side view, but you get the idea. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this arrangement. I'm really, really hopeful that, there's a close up of the uh, gable trim. I I think that looks nice. So these are kind of some of the elements that really set me back. That's why I haven't been on YouTube. <gasps> because doing this was a lot of going back to the beginning kinds of building work. And now I have it set. So if I'm ready to cut this, I'm ready to use it on the next building. Um, and I actually have been excited to try to build the next building with these parts, but I haven't even had time to breathe. I was in the Dominican Republic for a week recently, a school trip with uh, Tanya, and then um, we have our summer party coming up this weekend. <sighs> I don't like the summer. I know a lot of people like it. I don't like the summer. I don't like all this busyness. I have things to do. Anyway, so um, here are the um, parts of the roofs, right? So um, the actual um, components to be cut Right, so here's the part to be cut. So I had to measure that. Okay, if this was a straight line, um, you know, how big would it actually be? And then stretch that out to make a, the actual piece for the cutting. And the goal is to have it, it's going to be thin enough that I can take the wall that's cut and then I can glue it to it, um, applying, you know, pressure to bend it and then have the curve of the roof like that from a flat sheet. So once I have all these components ready for cutting, right, and then when I'm doing my designing, I can just grab this piece and I can throw it on my building and it's ready to go. Here is a cross section of the dormer, which shows you how the windows and the recessed areas work. So this is the wall that you see and cut out of it in profile is a circle, right? That's the circle here. And then the inside layer incorporates the inside layer of the window. So this is actually all one piece. And then I have a small piece for the dressing for the window facing this piece. So this piece, even though it's a different color, is actually part of the wall. This is the recess and this is the framing piece that goes over it to add an extra uh, layer to it. Um, so, uh, and this would be the gable trim and here's the uh, base. Oh, I didn't mention. Um, Sorry if I'm going fast. Am I going fast? Um, I guess I just don't want to shoot like another half an hour video. What I've decided to do for the floor is to add in, um, I want to make the floor interesting. I don't want it to just be a flat block. And so um, layers are always good. And then I thought instead of just this flat step down, I would add in um, a quarter round styrene rod to add a little round bit to fit into that corner. And I think that's gonna look nice. And part of that motivation um, was trying to figure out, uh, actually, let me go back to the uh, building itself here real quick. Uh, windows, windows, windows. So well, let's do here so we can see them both. All right, so the roof is gonna overhang. And I don't, want the roof to look like it's just been set on you know a cutout sheet um, so trying to think about what the eaves are going to look like became important to me and so um, even though it's not shown here because I'm going to be um, it's not for the cutting actually I'll provide that after um, this this look then is going to carry around the corner 
And now when you look underneath, it's going to look more interesting. Um, unless you get really underneath to see this, but you know, if you're looking at it, you know, from the model's eye view, I still want it to look good. So this was part of the motivation of figuring out how to handle um, all of that, uh, you know, the floor design. What what is it going to look like? How do I make it interesting? That sort of idea. Here you see um, all the stairs and all the stair parts. So the, all these pieces will be cut. And then I will be stacking them so that they are just like regular stairs. And then um, the stair sides. So um, I could, you know, pull this apart if I really want to. And for the next, you know, at, maybe not for the next building, but in the building after that, I can then add an element, something to make it a little different, one thing, and then build from the rest. And as I construct buildings, I'll have, you know, more and more of those pieces to work from. Uh, but uh, at the moment, uh, the next building, I just want to build from this and see if I can do it in an hour. That would be, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So we'll, we'll see. I'll let you know how that works out. And uh, like I mentioned before, um, I have the profile of the piece, the face on, the top down, and um, and here's the second sort of bracing I have. Now, I expect this to work well, <laughs> but there were definitely some things, um, and so you can see here how I have notes on the uh, assembly of the windows, for instance, um, to give me a sense of, of the components and, and how to arrange them. One thing that really threw me for a loop uh, was the rounded railing. Uh, so this will probably be the last thing I touch on. Let me check my notes though, just make sure I'm not forgetting anything major. No, I think I'm good. All right. This was actually a real hiccup. Um, to create the rounded railing, well, first of all, I did one and it's too large. For it to fit the building, right? Small, small diameter changes make a problem. <laughs> so, well, I built that. We'll set it aside. I'll keep it for another building. But um, getting and whoop, getting an even spacing between the posts, having it such that you know this uh, piece can either be removed or included, right? So, in the building itself, it has a, uh, a walkway. Right? So there's a steps leading up to this. So this is missing from here. However, so here's the one I settled on for the arch, for the railing. Well, having the windows and having these braces, now this is top down. So the actual brace where the um, arch meets right, is, is much shorter. Um, and it has this um, layer where the inside is extended right so this is a, a sandwich and these sides are a little a little narrower than the full width of the uh, brace hmm well I wanted to have braces around the windows because it allowed me to um, create um, what I thought would be nice is to have a little piece uh, a, a sort of two-tiered frame for the window I've seen this on some other buildings I thought oh that'll look nice a little a little different and then um, I wanted to have braces on the outside and what that meant is that I don't have a lot of space between them and I didn't want to make the building bigger and I didn't want to have the railing go right to the wall and then have this outside of it that seemed weird um, and it needs to fit on the floor. Is this all one piece? It is. Um, so, you know, this has to, well, it's not gonna, are you gonna be all right? Okay, well, that's pretty close, right? So I want this to fit on the floor and I don't wanna have a huge floor um, hanging off. You're not gonna let me do it. Uh, that's, oh, for God's sakes. All right, it's an unnecessary fiddling. I don't want to have a huge overhang uh, from this. So if I want to move this out further, right, I'd have to bring the circle out further and I didn't want to do that. So 
blah, 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 all in the end, what I decided to do was have the railing meet this section of the brace right at the bottom. So it would look like, all right, so you have to think of it. We're looking um, side on now so that the railing will come and overlap this layer and then meet flush with this layer. So this post becomes the end post for the railing. I think that was a great idea. I was very tickled with it. Um, but oh my God, was it a, a, a bear trying to get a, some arrangement on that that looked right. I'm looking from the other window, what happened to that window? Did I close it? Yes, that's the one I was thinking of, right? So this is going to meet here. Um, I don't know if it's going to meet flush flush. I don't think so, but because uh, this is all supposed to be to scale um, to the, you know the actual thickness of the materials. This is the handrail, so the railing is actually a little thinner under here. Uh, but um, I felt pretty good about that solution, and I feel like this little uh, brace kicking out here isn't going to create an awkward space in here visually. Um, so that. This this little area, how do I fix that? That was uh, a surprising amount of time. But I've done it, and I got it for the next building. That's all. I got a system. Oh, my gosh. Am I relieved about that <sighs> until I try it and use it. And I um, did add a little um, uh, extension on the back of the building, and I thought that would be nice. And so then I had to, you know, figure out how's I going to meet the building? Um, you know, how's the roof line going to write? It actually sits because the foundation kicks out a hair from the wall of the building, right? This is going to set into that. So, oh, I need a cutout in that back wall that accepts this. Next time. Next time. Uh, we'll see when the parts come. That will be the real test of how all of this is laid out. And the only other thing, so there's that, right? I might have missed that. I think there might be a couple things, but the real question, oh, wait, looks better over here. There we go. Is have I cut these pieces correctly to match the curve of this roof with this roof? I don't know. That's a trick. I have a feeling there's almost no chance I have it right just yet. Uh, but once I get it in hand, I can see what's wrong and you know what's working. Then I can make a modification to it. So that's one of those other spots. So, so there you go. That's the work that has been done, and um, I'm very excited to put the next building together um, because hopefully it's going to go together much more easily. And for arranging the um, cut parts like this, I'm going to have. Um, layouts for each of those subsections that are ready to go. So I don't have to strip the building down. I can just say, oh yeah, it's got one of these dormers. Um, I go over, I grab all the cut parts from that dormer and I throw them onto my uh, page to be cut. So that's a, a small organizing tactic uh, or not tactic, not technique, to do. Small organizing to do uh, that has yet to be done. So, uh, but otherwise, Whew. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to all fly um, and that the next one is easier. Um, but I've done my homework. I have tried my best to organize it. I think it's going to be okay. I should add that that's a lot of assembly. And maybe some of you have thought that already. Tons of parts to put together. Um, so that makes me... I'm going to have to see how the building goes together and um, kind of give that some thought. I don't think there's any way around it, but I've been talking to um, the gentleman who's helping me with laser cutting and he's been talking about 3D printing. And I don't know. This may be the last project I do this way um, because I, the ability to print the windows with all of their layers intact would be nice, uh, but uh, not this project. I'm not changing anything. I finally got a grip on this and I'm going forward with it. So. We'll see. The assembly. Very exciting. I don't know. I think it's going to be all right, though, because uh, most of it should just go together pretty quick and easy. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a time lapse of uh, the building's assembly. Uh, 
Mm, not the first building, the second building, once I get a handle on it and see how fast it goes and I can show you that. I haven't done a time lapse in a long time. Well, that catches you up on the Elf Town project. I feel good about moving forward from here. I feel like this is a real corner. Um, so wish me luck uh, because um, I need it to get um, get to the building part of this, which I'm excited to do. I'm very excited to do that. Questions and comments, welcome down below always. Oh, I forgot to mention that, um, oh, I forgot to mention notes. I uh, just shot a bunch of rapid fire critiques. I shot them before I shot this video so I could honestly say I shot them instead of having something happen where I couldn't shoot them. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel for those. I know lately my videos have been very sporadic. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's just been a crazy, crazy two months. Um, and I haven't found it very fun. And I'm much more interested in getting back to to this world um, more uh, dedicated Lee. I think that's a word. But I thought in the meantime, while there's a little gap likely to happen uh, before the next video that I would um, put a few in the can and then I can give you something to watch uh, in between uh, my next uh, production video, which will probably be the orc, uh, orc board. Uh, and uh, I like doing rapid fires. I haven't done them in a long time, it feels like really rusty getting that all set up had some problems work through them um, but uh, they're fun to do and I think you guys enjoy them and gals gals and guys why do guys always come first <laughs> PC neuroses right my wife just call me your wife anyway that's a reference to an old video there's the back finger you'll have to go find it and I also wanted to mention that I have added, um, I've written four monthly columns on my Patreon page for making modular boards. Um, three of them within this week. Uh, when I got back from the D Dominican Republic, I was just like, I don't even know what's going on. And I thought, I can sit down and write columns. That I can concentrate on and try to acclimate myself to the world. So I wrote three. I'm behind. I try to do one a month and I'm behind for the year. So this was I'm catching up, I'm catching up. Um, anyway, they're on modular boards and um, and so it's the foundation of them, um, how to add elements to them, rivers and such. Um, and then, um, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, put vegetation on them, that sort of idea. Now, I'm trying to do some theory and general concepts and options rather than photos step by step by step that's not that's not what i'm doing if you want that there's a hundred people out there who are doing stuff like that what i want to do is give you something different something that's a little more uh, conceptual a little bit more uh you know organizing for your thoughts and some tips and tricks thrown in um and so i think i'm trying to offer something kind of unique and um hopefully you if you go to look at them which you should it's free it's open to the public why wouldn't you look um, hopefully you find them interesting or helpful as well. Um, if you wanted to become a patron at the $5 level, then you can start telling me what to write for monthly columns, or you can tell me how to write them if you don't like the style that I'm writing them in. Um, I'm always uh, very connected to my patrons and I listen to them avidly. Why wouldn't I? They're supporting me. That's huge. Um, and I love them. I love them for that. I love them. I have like a little community forming and I have a lot of feedback with some of the patrons and it's really nice to make that kind of connection. Anyway, if one of my patrons is watching and you know who you are, I just want to say thank you and uh, I really appreciate our interactions there. So check out those columns. Plus I did two reviews on, I don't know if I mentioned the sophisticated finishes so much for a half hour video. <sighs> sophisticated finishes um, I did a review on their new products they've uh, released a rust kind of kit like a paint kit and a moss paint kit and um, it's not geared for miniature work 
But what I did is I um, walked through them and talked about how I might modify them and use different materials in addition to them. And I think that hopefully you might find that interesting as well. It was an interesting little project for me to kind of work through. Um, so those are also um, publicly viewable. And all of this stuff is currently pretty near the top of the um, Patreon feed, um, especially if you're not a patron, then they'll probably show up really close to the top. So it's easy to find. So that link is uh, going to be over here. And um, hopefully you go and check it out. And I do I have anything else? I hope not, because I've already gone on so long. It feels terrible to like say I need to talk about something more. I think that's it. <laughs> so thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. And um, stay tuned to the channel uh, because those rapid fire critiques are coming up. So I can honestly say that I will be back soon with another Terrence Gibbs video.